They have lots of different names and styles. Boxers. Briefs. Long johns. Shreddies. And jock straps. It's safe to say that the choice over which underpant to pull on in the morning has never been wider. So how has this all come about? How has a man's underpants gone from an essential garment into a fashion item? Sean Cole, a fashion historian with a penchant for pants, should know. So, Sean, tell us a little bit about the history of underpants. Well, the precursor of the underpant really is the loincloth. Um, it was a simple piece of cloth that offered protection and support for a man. And does this look just like a kind of nappy? Um, essentially it does, yeah. I mean, it's just a simple piece of cloth of various shapes that could be wrapped around the waist, pulled through the legs and offers comfort and support. And what came after that? Well, then you started to get sewn garments. So you had um, long... Um, trouser-like garments that in the Middle Ages were known as braise. And they developed really um, up from the 12th century through to the sort of 17th century in various lengths, but were kind of loose and baggy, really. So when did those all-in-one suits come about? You know, the things you see in the cowboy films and all that? That was a, a, a late 19th century development. Up until then, you had separate um, long johns and, and an undershirt. Mm -hmm. And really that was developed to cut down on the bulk that you had of wearing two garments and to offer warmth and comfort. So right up to the early 20th century, underwear was big, but still pretty much invisible and a private matter. Hot pants, hot pants. And then something happened as big pants shrank. It was all down to this man, Arthur Niebler. His invention, the Y-front. So how did the Y-front come about? The managing director of um, Coopers and Son in America um, was sent a postcard from France of a man wearing some very brief swimming trunks. And he was inspired by this, thinking that they'd offer support as a pair of underpants, and asked his engineer to construct something. They have an underpant engineer? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so why were they called a jockey? The only piece of underwear that offered that kind of support up to that point was the jock strap, which was invited for cycle jockeys. And so this underwear offered support, so they were known as the jockey. Well, they sold 12,000 pairs in the first two weeks after they went on sale in America, and they went on to become incredibly popular all around the world. Sales soared, and the Y-front was everywhere. Up until the 1980s, that is, when an advert turned the pants world upside down. It took me by surprise. Model Nick Kamen and his laundrette strip catapulted the boxer short into the pant of choice for the young and the cool. The ads helped make men's underwear sexy, bringing it into line with the way that women's underwear had been marketed. Why fronts? Well, they became instantly old fashioned and associated with the dull, drab 70s. It's cold in here. men's bodies were commodified for the first time. You had adverts of, you know, semi-naked men. And so underwear came from being a hidden thing to being something that was overexposed. My mum still buys my underwear. Is that normal? The statistics are that um, a third of men still have their underpants bought for them by yeah. their mother or their wives or girlfriends. Good. Normal. Now, of course, some people still cling on to their old wife fronts, but that's because they're so practical. You know, I reckon, with the right publicity, and that means enlisting someone with a Nick Kamen-style physique, Y-fronts could once again rule the world. Is that a wrap? Great. Marvellous, that's good. Well done, mate. Thanks very much. Very impressed. I like the colour of yours. They're Pink good, Dave. Well, these feel better, but those look better.